Hey everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, we're going to be talking about containers, where to get them, um, what sizes I recommend. You know, for those of you who have seen my videos, in just about every video, you can see some kind of container, right? I've grown just about everything in containers. You know, I've gone through the gambit of trying to find them, where to get them from, what sizes I really like. I, I think I'm uh, really experienced in this topic, so. Uh, let's start out with where to get them and what you're looking at here is a photo of um, The haul that I brought home this summer from a landscape company and That's probably the best place to get them as a local landscape company They have all these different trees that they plan out and they some of them they'll get rid of the pots but some of them will keep them and let people uh, pick them up from them or maybe they even try to resell them you know, it's a really great resource to use, especially to make these pots reusable, which they should be. They're made out of plastic. The second best place is probably Craigslist. You may have to pay a little bit for them, but the landscape companies, they're happy to get rid of them. Um, so certainly that's the best place. It took me a while to find one, you know, um, in the area. So do some little research, you know, make a couple phone calls. You will find them. Now, and these are larger sizes too, right? I got these, uh, these are 10 gallon to 20 gallon sizes here. And this would have cost me a fortune if I had bought these online. Um, the larger you get, the more expensive they are because it, obviously it costs more to ship. There's more plastic, there's more raw materials that needs to go into this. So if you're gonna get something larger and you're gonna buy it, you need to go with fabric. And that's really the, your only option, unfortunately. Um, I've done videos on fabric pots before and I don't really recommend them unless they are a larger size. So um, if you're thinking about using fabric versus plastic, go back and watch the video I did this summer. I talked all about the differences between fabric and plastic and why, you know, what I recommend. Anything below a 10 gallon for a fabric pot uh, for a fruit tree that's going to bear fruit, that's going to bear heavily, that's going to be a perennial. I don't really recommend anything below a 10 gallon uh, because the tree just will not attain the right size. It'll need too much water throughout the summer. You know, uh, that air can easily go through the sides of the pot when it's fabric and they can dry out. They certainly dry out a lot faster. Um, also the exterior inch, you know, all the way around the pot is getting root pruned, which is great for certain things, but um, that little inch around the edge is just wasted soil um, your tree is not going to get as big right if you have a 10 gallon sized um, grow bag or fabric pot it's not really 10 gallons it's a, a little bit deceiving but if I was going to get the fabric pots this is where I would get them uh, probably from AM Leonard uh, this is the best place I think you can get free shipping here at certain times of the year uh, you just have to sign up for their newsletter um, they have all different sizes, 10 gallon and up here, and they're at a pretty affordable prices. If you order three or more, so say you get 40 pots here, because it comes in a bundle of 10. So say I get 30 of them, I'll just put in three, and then I'll get the nice little discount here, and it's actually quite affordable. Um, 16 width by uh, 12 inches high, that's really not that bad for size. The other places I recommend is find something on Amazon. Um, you know, definitely get something with handles. Get something that has a nice reputation that's going to last a bit longer. I still haven't really ripped a single pot that was made out of fabric. That's the one thing that I was really worried about is that they would degrade over time and really become a problem. And I had to replace them all. But uh, so far, I've only ripped them because I ripped them by accident. I haven't ripped them or they haven't degraded in any way and I've had fabric pots now for at least four five years I think um, since I've started so um, maybe even maybe even six years I'm not even sure but point is uh, they are a nice alternative but there is some pros and cons to them and this is where I would get them um, now if you want smaller pots right because what I like to do, and this doesn't really make any sense to do it any other way, I think you should really standardize this. You should stick with one size pot, if you can, for just about everything, or two different size pots for just about everything. Um, don't make this more difficult than it needs to be, right? 
figure out what size it is that you want and go with that. To start any plant though, however, you need smaller pots, right? You don't want to put seeds in a 15 gallon size pot. You don't want to put a, a rooted cutting in a 15 gallon size pot or a cutting that you're trying to root in that size. You know, you need to start out smaller. So the best thing I recommend is these tree pots. And these are not really for starting seeds. These are for starting cuttings. Highly recommend these because they get a, uh, a root system. They're four inches wide by nine inches long. So they're a lot longer than they are wide. And this is really nice for getting a deeper root system so that when you put these pots, or you put these plants, I should say, when they're fully rooted out in these pots, you transplant them into, let's say a 10 gallon size pot. It's not really a big deal, right? Because the, the tree is then gonna grow outwards rather than have to grow down. And I think that's really nice for having them adjust to a larger size pot. Um, I genuinely believe that the, the longer the pot and the more roots you can get down, the better it is you're gonna better off it is you're gonna be for these trees. Now if it's something like an annual, um, I wouldn't necessarily start them in this size, right? I'd probably go to something like this, and this is like a root pouch here, this is a fabric pot, they don't last very long, but they're the same size, right? It's a one gallon size pot, that's the size I would stick with. I wouldn't buy anything less than a one gallon, um, or maybe even a half, I would get a half gallon is what I'm rooting some of my cuttings in, but this is the same thing, right? Um, you know, it gets you a nice little root system there. I like the uh, the root pouches for smaller plants because of that airflow that really helps them stay healthy, um, helps them grow a bit more, and they don't get root bound in these little pots, in these fabric pots. So, you know, for a smaller size, this is what I would do is get them at Greenhouse Mega Store. There's also a couple other companies. You can do some research and figure out what the best price is, but I think either this here or these tree pots are the cheapest I found for the value. So if I'm starting seeds though, you know, I would do something different, right? Get a tray, get maybe some, uh, some small sized cow pots or peat pots or even small, you know, like three inch by three inch plastic pots. That's really up to you. But for rooted cuttings and most other things, I'm gonna be using these tree pots or these root pouches here that are a half gallon to one gallon in size. Anything less than that, like I said, I think is a waste of time. Once they fully root out into this size, then I put them into 10 gallons minimum. And that's where they will stay for the remainder of their life. And we root prune every couple of years once they reach maturity. And uh, that's what I do. I standardize this, right? I've got the one gallon size into 10 gallons. I've also got some 15 gallons and some 20 gallons. But that's all I'm dealing with there, right? I've pretty much standardized this actually now to only have 15. I think 15 is the sweet spot of what I can carry. It's also uh, a nice sized tree. It's worth the space. Um, you know, I think they're nice. So for me, in terms of size, right? Because we're gonna get in. We we're supposed to get into that. We kind of already did. That's the size I recommend. Um, I don't recommend growing a fruit tree that's gonna bear heavily. They're gonna need a lot of nutrients. You know, I don't recommend growing a perennial fruit tree or a perennial fruiting shrub that gets some real good size to it in less than a 10 gallon size pot. And if it's in a fabric pot, you may need to go just a slight size higher because of that ring around the edge that doesn't count, okay? So those are my thoughts on that. You also need to consider what color you want, okay? So black is great for getting these plants started getting them some heat, some extra sunlight, get them to warm up the soil, increase the metabolism. But if I lived in Arizona, California, somewhere really warm, I would want white pots or gray or something lighter that's not going to absorb as much heat. In fact, some of you guys may have to put, you know, like, um, you may have to put like uh, tin foil around the edges of the pot to kind of reflect that heat. You know, sometimes if you live in such a warm place, you want less heat. For me, I want black because I live in a colder place. I want as much heat as I can get to get these things going as quickly as I can earlier in the season. So black's really important to me. The color is super important, okay? Don't disregard what I just said um, because it's, you know, 
it's a little bit more work, right? Find something that's white if you guys live in California. You will be so much happier for it. Um, so the, the color, we got the color, we got the sizes that we want and that I recommend. Um, and that's, I believe, kind of it, right? We talked about the fabric, we talked about the plastic, we talked about, um, again, the sizes. Um, so I think the last thing I want to mention here, just to wrap this whole thing up, is that no one can really tell you the perfect size for any of these trees or any of these plants. People ask me this all the time. What size do you recommend? Well, it's a range, right? Because if I could grow them in 40 gallons and I had somebody to help me move these things, maybe I would, right? Maybe I would put them in a 40 gallon. If I had somewhere to store them because a 40 gallon size tree is gonna get huge, then maybe I would get a 40 gallon. But the fact that I'm kind of limited here and everyone's situation's different, I can't say, okay, everybody put it in a 40 gallon. Who the hell's gonna be able to carry that? It's really heavy, right? You know, how old are you? How good's your back? What's your health like, you know? Um, what can you carry is really determining on a lot of these pots, right? Do you Can you just leave the pot there inevitably, right? Do you have to move it at all? You know, there's so many different factors here that I think a large part of it is whether or not you have to move it, what can you move, and go from there, right? So if I can lift the 10 gallon by myself and not really struggle, that's a great size. If I can't lift a 15 gallon by myself, or I can lift only a few of them, and then I'll start getting tired, then that's going to be a problem, right? So for me, I would say a 10 gallon size is reasonable. For a lot of you, you're probably not going to be able to do a 10 gallon size. Um, it's just the truth. So you're going to have to just come up with some other solution here. Maybe you guys can get a cart. You know, maybe you guys can get a dolly that's super duty, right? There's They have some dollies here on AM uh, Leo here that will help you move them. Maybe they're not called dollies. Yeah, here we go. Okay. So this is like a super, you know, 1,600 pound dolly that you can lift all these different things. Some people have uh, created them themselves. I mean, this is perfect for moving pots. So... You know, you can strap it, I think, as well to the to the thing so it doesn't go anywhere. You know, this makes it a lot easier for people to move um, larger pots. But anyway, guys, I think this one cleared all that up for us. So hopefully no one has any further questions. And if people do have questions from this point on about pot sizes, I'm going to direct them to this video. All right. So thank you, everyone, for watching. And uh, I'll catch you for tomorrow's video. Take care.